Hi, my name is Derek and I run Big Box Pro Video Production in Corpus Christi, Texas. Uh, today I'm making this video to show you all a little bit about how, a, uh, how to make a pretty heavy duty industrial um, DV slider, ND slider, whatever you want to call them. Um, pretty much a micro dolly is what the category they all fit into. Um, ND slider, DV slider, some of the name brands that you can buy. Um, but I got all my information off of a uh, forum in which there's a Zaza slider. You can go to Zaza slider, uh, do a Google search for that, and you'll be able to find out plenty of information on that system. Um, theirs is real under in pretty much interchangeable type of uh, material that they use for the glide track that's out in Europe. Um, they all use a rail system, a linear bearing or linear guide track. Um, the system that I purchased was from uh, Ingus. It's a company that's all over the world. Uh, the headquarters for the United States is out of New York. So I ordered up last week, got it here exactly as they promised. They were nice and courteous on the phone. I highly recommend them. Um, great customer service, really great business to, uh, to deal with. And they followed through on everything. And pretty much if you're new to, the, uh, to how the Zaza slider uh, system is, they're the main track that they recommend and say is sturdy for most camera uh, rigs is a, um, I guess it's 16 millimeter rails that are 60 millimeters apart. Well, since I'm gonna be using a bigger camera, bigger tripod system, bigger um, depth of field adapter and stuff like that, gonna be running a lot of weight on it, I decided to go ahead and get the larger track and this track here is a 20 millimeter rail that is 80 millimeters wide. And then on this rail, you have a carriage that runs and it actually has almost like a Teflon coated bearing in it um, that slides along the track. And what we're gonna do now is make some modifications so this can work for video. Uh, most of the time what people do is have a mount, maybe a quick connect mount, or they mount it directly to the stud on their tripod, um, or use a monopod on one side and a tripod on the other. What I'm going to be using for my rig, since it is so heavy, um, really don't have the opportunity to lock it straight in in the middle on a tripod. Um, I went ahead and got the long rail. Um, this is 1,500 millimeters, or roughly about five feet. So if I mount it on the middle of my tripod, even though I have a really strong tripod, um, which is a, a 3046 for a Manfrotto that I use here, um, really strong, really heavy duty, but there's still a little bit of give in the head. So I'm gonna go ahead and set mine up to where I'm gonna tap a, a hole in one side, tap a hole in the other, and we'll have it on my tripod on one side and light stand on the other. Um, so we're gonna be doing some modifications to this linear rail and um, here we go. This is the carriage that sits on the track and glides very, very smoothly. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm picking up any audio as we are sweeping from one side to the other, but it's, uh, it's relatively pretty quiet. And um, so what we're gonna do now is go ahead and tap a hole right in the middle so that way my 116 Manfrotto head can go ahead and mount right on top of this guy. The IGA system comes shipped in um, from New York, but all the parts are made in Germany. Um, so I am gonna go ahead and take my plate and remove the bearings from it um, with just a simple Allen wrench you can go ahead and disconnect them. I'm gonna go ahead and do this so whenever I'm messing with the plate, I don't run the risk of possibly messing up the, uh, the bearing in here, which is a circular, uh, just Teflon coating um, of some sort that they, um, they pretty much guarantee for life and say that it's self-lubricating and will take care of itself. So that's pretty much the bearing that slides on the rail and um, this is now, what it does is has a point on it and a striking surface, so that way we can go ahead and hit our dead center here, hit it with the back of a hammer, and then that way it makes a dent in which our drill bit has a dead center in which it will start, um, start to bite through this aluminum. So now that we have the center marked, uh, what we're gonna be doing is using a, a drill press to go ahead and 
cut this uh, aluminum so that way um, we're not going to the full 3 8 we'll go a little bit smaller and then what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll actually put those threads in into this um, this aluminum plate um, it's pretty easy to do I am using a a, um, a drill press but if you have your own drill that has a uh, you know a little bit of power to it you'll be able to cut through this real easy aluminum is a very very soft metal to uh, deal with um, so it's pretty easy to get your drill bit through it. So if you have a drill, um, just a hand drill, you're going to be able to do this. But uh, my preferred method is a drill press. Okay, so now we're here set up at my drill press. Um, we have the bit in, have the plate here. Underneath I have just a piece of wood so that way when we pierce through, um, we're not going into my plate there at the, um, on the bottom of the bandsaw. So what we do is we're going to go ahead and line up our drill bit with that exact spot that we, uh, we punched on. So you can get that lined up pretty good. Bring it up, we're gonna start up the drill press so it might be a little noisy and uh, punch through this. tap and die set is actually something that's pretty easy to work with especially with um, soft metals like aluminum so we've gone ahead and threaded our hole or uh, drilled our hole and this thing actually goes in and cuts the thread so you try to get it as straight up and as square as possible um, and then it's it's totally hand turned you cannot do this with the um, with the drill press or your drill um, because you have to slowly key in um, and get those teeth to bite and you do not want it to strip and you don't want it to go in crooked. So um, I turn my plate a little bit as I go so that way I make sure that I'm square from all directions. So as you can see here, I'm not having to use too much force at all um, to get this bit to cut in my grooves for my uh, 3816 uh, bolt that's gonna thread through here and hook my tripod head up onto this carriage plate. And you can see that in this plate now, we have threads and that's what we were looking for. Okay, so as you can see now, we got our tripod head mounted directly onto our plate. Um, like I said, some people use risers um, to go ahead and give about a four inch lift on the, their tripod head. Um, this is what I have right now, so this is what I'm, I'm rolling with, but I might go ahead and do that in the future. Um, right now, our bearings are loose with our four bolts, but we're gonna go around from side to side and tighten them down little by little so that way they fit on there, they auto align, and they have the best smoothest slide possible. Okay, I just brought the, uh, the rail off the drill press. I also tapped my uh, my holes right here. I'm not sure how good you can see. It's kind of dead center right there between the uh, second set of holes and the third set of holes. I'm gonna go ahead and tap the quarter 20 right next to it, probably about an inch off or so. So that way it gives this rail a lot of versatility when I have people who, uh, other people in the industry around me who want to use it. Um, I'll be able to rent it out to them and they can use it for their small rigs, big rigs, if they're going to mount it on their tripod, if they're going to mount it on light stands, however they choose to mount it. Uh, I'm going to put one or two more holes in here so it makes it very versatile for whatever configuration or setup uh, that we want to go with. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the quarter 20 hole in there. I might put just a straight hole so that we can bolt it down to something. Um, and then I'm also going to take the very end where there's holes for the um, rail and what I'm going to do is tap those so that way I can put some washers or some rubber stops and uh, bolt through there and um, make sure that the slider does not slide off of the end of the rail. So that's my next step. 